On the phone, it is a pleasure to welcome back to this program. Who you know, I just uh, I did some uh, research, uh, and in, which basically involved me searching my own site. And uh, it's been a year since we've had Michael Ian Black on the show. Longest year of my life. I, I know, I know. I would, I would, I would, I would see you I, in person. I would see you, um, you know, giving interviews, and I would just think like, why, why are you torturing Michael this way? Well, well for me, it's like there, there comes a moment where you're sitting by the phone enough days in a row, and eventually you start to think, maybe he's not going to call. <laughs> There's a long list of people you're waiting for to hear from, though, too, right? I mean, when you're... No. You. <laughs> just, well, I think... You and I, only you. I, I, well, I'll, I'll tell you what I was doing. I was waiting, and it didn't happen. I was waiting for, for you to put out three books in a two-month period instead of uh, just two before I have you on the program. No. The third one comes out in September, Sam. I can only do so much. You uh, now wait. Okay, you have. You're not doing it right. Which is yeah. the book came out like when in uh, like March, I guess, right? Yeah, right. Beginning of March. Beginning of March, and then you came out with another book like three months later with um, with uh, what's Megan it? McCain. Yes, Megan McCain. Yeah. Now wait, wait. First off, okay. First off. What you're what, what you what, how did you end up writing a book with Megan McCain? And then second off, why would you have that book come out three months later, dude? D- d- didn't your publicist say, "Hey, we gotta d- don't do that"? I would have preferred that it came out later, but it, we wanted it out before the election, so oh, we had right. to get it out. Okay. And uh, how did you I end up writing Megan? a book with Megan McCain? I tweeted her, and I was like, "You want to write a book together?" And she said, "Sure." You told me that the other day. Is that serious? Are you serious? Yeah. Why is, that, why is that so hard to believe? This is how people communicate in the 21st century, Sam. They get on Twitter, they tweet each other, they say, hey, you want to be friends? And the other person's like, sure, I'll be friends. And then you go, and then you write, tweet them and you go, hey, you want to write a book? And they go, yeah, I'll write a book. I just tweeted MSNBC today and said, can I have my own TV show? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I start that tomorrow. <laughs> Hold on for a second. got to check Twitter here. Are you serious? I'm not, well, I'm not terribly surprised. Serious, you were on no. uh, Up With uh, Chris the other day. I only caught part of it. How was it? The trick? The what? What did you ask me? Weren't you on uh, Chris Hayes' show on Saturday? Yeah, I was. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go back, uh, I think, next weekend. You've got to be kidding me. What? Why is, that, why is that hard to believe? Well, it's not hard to believe. It's just it's slightly enraging. But, Sam, you're on Current. I saw you at Current TV just the other day. Yeah, you were on Current, too. I mean, here's what I'm saying, okay? Like, when... I, I basically leave the comedy business, more or less, to, right. to go into sort of like, I mean, I didn't perceive it at the time that I was going into the politics business, but, you know, I spend all my time talking about politics now, which, you know, right. is not, frankly, to be honest with you, as fun as being in the comedy business. Sure. Uh, and so I ran into this in 2008. 2008, I'm there covering uh, the Democratic Convention, for, ostensibly for Air America, and I can't even get a decent seat in the convention hall unless I go around with Sarah Silverman. Yeah, yeah. Now I got well, news she's for famous. It. Yeah, I understand she's famous. I get that, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I'm going to be Joe. I'm going to be Joe Biden's date at the convention this year. <laughs> don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. There is no justice. Look, there is no justice. Sam, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Sam, but you're more Sam, political even than Sarah is. I think. Sam, what you're forgetting? You're forgetting one important factor, which is that I'm a genius. No, I understand. So all I have to all I have to do is dip my toe in whatever pond <laughs> I spot, and I'm instantly enveloped. What is the book that you wrote with Megan McCain? What is it about? It's about comity, C O M I T Y. Uh huh. It's about strangers going on a road trip and falling in love with America and with each other. It's called America, you sexy bitch. Wait a second. Did you end up like hooking up with Meghan McCain? No, we're not like a we're not like a we're not like a romantic item, but we're friends, falling in love in a platonic way. Mm, really? Come on, we can break some news here. Um, there was no look. There wasn't. There was, not only there was no like. There wasn't even cuddling. There was no spooning. There was nothing. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, I, I I'm. 
it, it, so she's nice. She's a nice person. I mean, I, I have no her. doubt that she's nice. She seems. Uh, people have told me that she's uh, very nice. Uh, but uh, you know, I get, I get, you know, how, yeah, I mean, it's, I get annoyed too. I mean, here she's all of a sudden she's in media because she had a, uh, she had a blog. I don't know. I mean, it's everywhere you go. It's all nepotism. You know how it is. Not well, me. sure, but 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 you're uh, the only you person know, I know who's actually sort of scratched and clawed their way up and and have, have gotten everything they've ever deserved. That's right. Um, but there's nepotism with me too, because I'm Jewish, and we control the media. Well, that's true. But I'm Jewish, and 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 how come I'm not getting any of that? Well, there's only room for so many Jews, Sam. <laughs> I understand. You used up all the Jew. You used up all the Jew slots. That's right. Me and Sarah Silverman are using up the Jew slots. Yeah. And you know, John John Stewart basically took your job. So what are you going to do? I Look. Know. You've got a closet that you broadcast out of. You're doing fine. That's right. My, Michael, what was I said, do you want to do the show? And he's like, well, it, 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 can I do it by phone or do I got to come in? I'm like, there isn't room. There's a room for you to come in. We, don't, we'd ha- right. we would have to sort of rearrange things to, to find the room to put a chair in. You have essentially a broadcasting shtetl. That's true. What so, the, but that's a lot more than a lot of what people was have. That, wait, you know? What you was just, that noise? Oh, that was me getting in my car because I'm taking my kids to sailing school. <laughs> You're taking your kids to sailing school? Is that what they're doing for the summer? They're going for two weeks, yeah. Was that your... A couple uh, of, uh, three, three hours a day. I'm, yeah, because I'm trying to pass. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pass as a, as a boy. I understand. Of course. Right. What did you name your kids? Uh, you don't want to say? Yeah, I don't want to... Uh, Bra- uh, wait, I'm, I'm trying to think of lots of names. Yeah, I was going to say... Brandon? Brandon and Crystal. You na- yeah, see, there's my kid Brandon. You named them both Michael Ian Black, the second and the third. <laughs> Look, so their names I are did. actually Michael Ian Black Black. <laughs> their first names are Michael Ian Black. What? Um, so look at this. You know, that's the thing. It's the comedy. It's such a. It's a better life. It's a better life. You're taking your kids out to uh, go sailing. <laughs> What's up? I know. It's a, better, it's a better life. Your kids think I'm funny? No, no, they don't. They're laughing, <laughs> uh, they're laughing at me because I'm funny. They're laughing at me, not with me. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying they don't even know you exist. Uh, your kid, well, that's what you think, but the, your kids are tweeting me all the time. You're, you're like our daddy, but funny and nice. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, that's right. And you, but you're a dad. You're doing fine. Yeah, I'm all right. My 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 kids. She's, she's semi into me, not totally. How old? So, almost seven. Oh yeah. Well, if she's not into you now, she's never going to be. Right. I know. I mean, this, this is the time this where is it's sort of prime. Yeah, prime daddy time. And uh, if she's not displaying a lot of affection for you now, my guess is that that's never going to happen. How did both your books do? Is one doing? Did, did the one with Megan McCain? It got you more. That that had to get you more sort of like press, right? I mean, how did you work that out? Aren't you supposed to like not do that? James Patterson does it. He comes out with a book every day. I don't even know who that is. You don't know who James Patterson is? is Come the, on, Sam. Is that the son of? Uh, is that is that John Huntsman's son? It's, he's the most like, popular author in the English language. He has he has a book. He has like one hundred and fifty books or something. They're all on the bestseller list. I don't even know who that is. I mean, look at the, this is this is how narrow my worldview is. That's why I'm I'm having to call you to give me a movie recommendation. All right, then I'll say I'll say he's like Tom Clancy or something. Uh, always coming out with new books. Okay, that's a that's a, that's more of a political reference, a geopolitical reference. A geopolitical, yeah. Well, Tom Clancy, yeah. I have I have I have vague awareness of uh, Tom Clancy. Right. See, Sam, if you just read a little more, studied a little more. I tried. Got out a little more, got I, out of your closet, and saw the actual world. You know, you might find us a little success in this business. It's possible. You can't just be so. You can't just be so myopic, Sam. It's true. And though. just, fo- no, well, you just know. focused on Nancy Pelosi's brazier. <laughs> you have to get out. <laughs> I think. I th- I actually think there's some true to the uh, myopia charge. I mean, I and you know, I can't if I go outside in the sun now for more than like. Uh, literally ninety seconds. Um, I get uh, I break out in eczema. So I uh, basically stay inside. I'm trying to work out if I can get like a system of tunnels to get back to my apartment. That's what I'm saying. You know, don't look so hard for the brass ring. Let the brass ring come to you. 
Now, speaking of Brass Ring, what are you doing now in terms of besides your books and making all these appearances on all the news programs? Unemployed and desperate. Really? No. Well, you're no, always no. you always make it sound like you're on the edge of not working, but that you're always working. Well, but it's always you know I'm in a panic like everybody. Everybody's right. always in a panic. That's the American way of being these days, and I'm no different. Uh, really? I mean, you must have something. Seriously? I do. I'm shooting a movie uh, this month with my old friends Michael Showalter and David Wayne. Well, They're what putting the frick? together a movie. Why? Would they, are they not yes. paying you well? Because Wayne definitely seems like he could, he's in a position to pay well no, for these. No, it's a tiny m- movie. It's a, it's a tiny movie. Well, why doesn't Wayne put you in one of his bigger movies? I ask myself that question every time he makes one of his bigger movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's t- it's tough. I go into these. I go I go watch these movies, and I'm like, oh my god, I know everybody in this movie. Right, but you're in politics now. Right, and then I go and I look at um, uh, all the shows on politics, and I go, I know all these people. What's happening? It's on your comedian, huh? <laughs> yeah. You're a comedian. You straddle you straddle both worlds, but you stand in none. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's it's highly problematic. So, what is the movie you're doing with Show Walter? Is this the one that he wrote and Wayne is directing, or something like that? He and David wrote it. David's directing it. Show Walter's producing it. It's called They Came Together, and uh, there's a double entendre there, which is purposeful. And it's just a silly rom com, you know, rom com parody, I should say. Who's the lead? Uh, who's the lead? Is it Show Walter or is it you? It's Paul Rudd oh. and Amy and Amy Pollard. How many times can you go to that well? What do you mean, Paul's too fantastic? I you love know, Paul. I love Paul. He's if, if, I, if, I get it. You're jealous of Paul like you're jealous of everybody. I get it. No, 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 no. I will say this, though. It, you know, like, if, if, if Paul Rudd and then about 20 other actors of that ilk didn't exist, I would have had more work 10 years ago. That's probably true. But, uh, but they, no, but I actually, exist. I think Paul Rudd is great. But, um, and, uh... I'm a big fan. I just, I mean, they they have to give Paul Rudd every job. Yeah, they do. Unfortunately, yeah, it's it's union. It's a union rule now. Oh, <laughs> every rom com you know, needs to have yeah, Paul Rudd in it. You're so yeah, you're so pro union. Why don't you look at some of their bylaws and see how uh, you know they're exploiting the rest of us because of their 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 insistence that Paul Rudd be in every long call. This is sort of like a uh, a reunion for, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. yeah. It's got a lot of the same people in it. And where where is it shooting? Is it going to be like another one of those things? Are we going to read in another 10 years about how this was just sort of like a, like a, you know, a, a, a bacchanalia or whatever it is? I mean, is this going to be some type of like, you know, Every time I read, you know, every time I heard a report of what was going on at Wet Hot American Summer, it was literally like like a free love camp. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> and that's what this will be, a free love camp. Where where is it where is it shooting? Brooklyn and its environs. Oh, uh, all right, so it's not going to be like everybody's going to go out into the woods and I guess no. this is sort of like the the middle age version of uh, of what happened with yeah. Wet Hot American Summer. No, this is this is a this is a this is a proper movie making experience. I understand. I do remember specifically having an you know like a, a conversation with uh, Wayne back at the time where he's like, "We're trying to raise money for this to shoot it on film." I'm like, "Shoot it on film? That's ridiculous, man! Just do it yourself with a video camera." That's what I did. I know. And I, know. I remember thinking, like, man, he is just going about this all wrong. Yep. And um, it turned out, and no, it was like I, I was right up all, I was, I was completely right about up until the word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's going about this. All right, exactly <laughs> right. He is doing this exactly as you should do it. Uh, is what I should have said at the time, but uh, and then did you see this with Louis? What about? Did you see the the thing where Louis sold all these tickets to his show on on Louis C uh, K dot com? Like he's doing, you know, I, like a tour. Did you hear I about did this? See that? Yeah, was Un- that amazing? Unbelievable. I hope he breaks Ticketmaster. It really is amazing. I mean, there 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 is. What Louis is doing is, in in some ways, a very political act. Uh, 
I'm not talking about the comedy that he's doing. I'm talking about this sort of this notion of basically cutting out these uh, middlemen. Now, not everybody can do that. Um, Louis right now, but he's he's showing a way that it can't be done, and I, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. You are obviously very close to the uh, sailing camp because I can't. You're breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? Oh, I can't. I apologize, but I, I live in the woods, and so when we drive in the woods, sometimes things get a little uh, droppy in terms of calls. Yeah, well, you sound all right now. So, well, let's be, let's be, let's let's be quick about this. What? Um, what are we going to do? Uh, what 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 movie should I see? It's not going to be Wet Hot American uh, Summer. Or this like weekend that. will be streaming in. <laughs> uh, into the world of sexual. Horror. Wait a in second, no, I am Michael. I can't hear you. You're completely. Michael Ian Black, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh my god. I hope he's okay. I really I hope he's okay. Well, there it is. Um I guess we're gonna have to just wait. Maybe we'll have him back on. I mean I remember when <clears throat> we were down performing at uh a place called Rebar that is not even remotely close to being there anymore, uh at around seventeenth and seventh. It's in nineteen ninety four. 95 and uh michael was in like sort of like the sort of just like a slightly younger generation than me i was sort of caught between two generations between sort of like marin's you know uh, sort of marin's generation and uh michael and black's generation and which you know we're talking about 16 months i think was what separated everybody but uh just in terms of the perception and he did a very funny bit where he sort of brought all the stuff in his house and tried to sell it on stage. It was funny. Um, all right, well, uh, we're going to have to, we'll have to have him back and get the, uh, the movie recommendation.